Hello everyone, my name is Callan Stump and I'm an MSc student here at the University of Alberta. A Stirling engine is a machine that is able to transform heat into electricity by a mechanical process. So in the lab where I work, we employ different types of Stirling engines and try to increase the performance of them so that they can produce the most amount of power from the littlest amount of heat. So we in our lab are looking at heat sources from water stored underground that's been heated to the earth, heated by the earth to about 100 degrees Celsius. The research that we perform in our lab is important because as the world's population grows, so does its energy demand. And we must look into utilizing power generation processes that do not produce uh, greenhouse gases. And in this case, a Stirling engine feel, fills that niche. So this picture in front of you is a Stirling engine. So Stirling engines work by operating between a temperature source and a temperature sink to generate mechanical power. So here you can see two different pistons of a Stirling engine, one being the power piston and the other being the displacer piston. The power piston is able to move according to the pressure change inside the Stirling engine. And this in turn drives the displacer piston, which results in the fluid moving between the temperature source and the temperature sink, which generates the pressure change and in turn creates the motion of the power piston. So you can see here on the top view, the actual movement of the power piston is linear in an up and down fashion and is transformed into rotational motion, which then we can connect on, for example, an alternator, and from there we can generate electricity from it. So the spinning disc there is a flywheel. The flywheel is what helps keep the motion of a Stirling engine constant. Here is another version of a Stirling engine, similar to the one we've seen before, where we have a power piston and a displacer piston, but in this case, a much larger flywheel. And this flywheel is much larger because the Stirling engine is much smaller in this case. Here we have an even a smaller Stirling engine, and you can just see the power piston being driven by the rhombic drive, which are the two red gears. Here is an earlier iteration of one of our Stirling engines that utilizes a significantly smaller bellows for the power piston seal. In order to determine how well our Stirling engines are performing, we must test them. So this is one of our Stirling engines in one of our testing apparatus so we can determine the amount of power that it is producing. We also have to make sure that our components are rigorous. And pictured here is a, what you may know of from a Stirling engine. This is called a coffee cup Stirling engine. So it is able to run off the heat from the coffee cups underneath it. In our lab, we primarily use 3D printing in order to create our Stirling engines, as it is both quick and relatively inexpensive. This 3D printer here is quite large and it can print one meter by one meter. Stirling engines can be utilized in many applications such as with concentrated sunlight or even by hot water. So in this laboratory, we're looking at utilizing Stirling engines to create power off of geothermal water that is stored deep below the Earth's crust. And with that, we can help try and mitigate the effects of climate change by having a power generation process that does not rely on fossil fuels. Thank you so much for watching Future Energy Systems video. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of our exciting content. Check out the links below to our website and learning page where you can find activities, learning extension, and more. You can also sign up on the website for notifications for future videos and interactive opportunities. There's so much to learn as we explore our energy future.